He's always surrounded himself with clocks, dozens of them, all kinds and sounds, and done his own repairs. None of the clocks ever keep the same time, which can easily unsettle visitors. But to Paul Cox, the arrangement makes perfect sense. In his private world, which is far from ordinary, he lets the clocks have their own life. In recent years, one by one, the clocks have wound down, and his Albert Park sanctuary is slowly falling silent. of April, 69 today. When you're young, this age seems ancient, but I still feel about 40 and behave accordingly. I now have time to go and see old friends who I haven't seen for years. It's a whole new experience after years of concentration on my work and the children. Now I don't have to rush back to the editing room or research something related to a film. I will always have the time now for everything. Every day given to me is a bonus. We all live on borrowed time. There's no other time. He's not just a great filmmaker. I think, I think he's an artist in the true sense of the word. Paul is pretty weird, you know, pretty <laughs> crazy, crazy in a good, wonderful, interesting sense, you know. No, it's true. My name's Charles. Would God approve of someone who saw flowers as sensually arousing, tender, loving beings? I've always regarded him as a sort of an odd blend between a humorless Woody Allen and Werner Herzog in his immense capacity to make movies. Everyone is here, they're drinking a, a beer. Oh, to celebrate Martha's party. as they would Werner Herzog, you know, climb a mountain for him and go down the other side into a valley of lava, you know. Uh, his friends would die for him. Rehearsals were, were well advanced before I suspected. Rehearsals, I'm... my God! Look, we're not only talking about my life, my wife, my marriage, we're talking about my music. Well, my music can go fuck itself as far as I'm concerned. I'd rather have my marriage. Please, I ask you gently to keep your voice down. You can go fuck yourself too, you silly cunt. He's a wonderful man. I'm glad I never fell in love with him. <laughs> on the couch with your head on the pillow, one leg up the right leg. What do you think you're doing? I'm drawing what I see. I see no vegetable matter surrounding that poor girl. Oh, but I do. Very clearly. Tear that deranged potato salad up and start again. Oh, no, I can't do that. I say you will. And I'll punch you on the nose and plead artistic freedom right up to the Privy Council. <laughs> what a strange little person you are entirely. <laughs> <laughs>